cellists. Welcome back to my channel. In case you don't know me, uh, my name is Inbal Segev and I'm a cellist, soloist, chamber musician and sometimes teacher. Thanks for your feedback and comments. I received a couple of requests to talk about the Dvoja Concerto and since I have to play this spring, the timing is great. So let's get started. Today I would like to talk about how vibrato can help shape a phrase. Uh, we will later talk about how to tackle the virtuosic passages, but for now let's look at the second theme, uh, which is upbeat to measure 140. Much more comfortable. <laughs> slows down at the end of the phrase. Here. Um, so, see if you can control the oscillations. So, start fast and much less on the A. It speeds up towards the top of the phrase. You can see the vibrato starts less, more, and the top of the, the phrase is the A, so use wider vibrato. I would use also faster vibrato. Let's now look at measures 149 to 153. A part of this phrase repeats, and you should look for ways to vary that repetition. Um, I change my fingerings and use a slide when shifting from the B to the G the second time around. So, um, mm. now I use three three. from the B to the G the second time. Whatever you do, just don't play those two phrases exactly the same. I also taper the phrase by slowing down my vibrato from the F sharp to the E the first time around. So more, less on the E. But the second time I feel the phrase goes forward so I don't slow it down as much. So you can maybe slow down a little bit and then and open up again on that same E um, in preparation to going on to the A. talked about the second theme let's go back and look at the very beginning um, as you know the cello starts playing after about three a three minute uh, orchestral introduction which is a long time to wait there and get cold so be sure first of all you are really warmed up before your performance and also I know some people who like to um, practice that first page for example first thing in the morning no warm-up just to get themselves used to playing super cold the very beginning was I improvisando? Let's play a little free, maybe. Also, be sure not to stop your sound. Um, I said it with Bernard Greenhouse, and he used to say, let the instrument uh, vibrate. Let, let the natural vibration of the instruments come through. Don't choke it. So... <laughs> You hear that vibration of that B. If you keep the bow on the string, you will not hear that. So mm. as opposed to lift the bow at the end of those Bs. Um, I 
like playing those not completely measured, so not uh, but rather shorten that 16th note to give it a little impetus. Um, and now we get to an interesting uh, subject, uh, which chords are we going to play in the beginning? Um, I just bought recently the score, not cheap. I'm going to show you. Okay. This is a big mama of score. It's heavy. Um, and uh, in, uh, in Dvořák's handwriting, black on white, black on beige, uh, we see those chords. And I'm going to show you the chords. <laughs> This is A. In the Urtex edition, you will see that uh, there's one chord that is different. So instead of so this F sharp, second chord is in the Urtex, and that's probably because the first edition had a G, but. The and I know this is extremely dry material I'm talking about here, but the um, the manuscript has a F sharp and then A. Anyway, enough about that. Um, why don't you use a little wiggle on the chords so not uh, don't forget your vibrato there. Doing, uh, playing that chord up bow so that it catapults me to the E. Mm -hmm. Next, let's look at bar 114. I like starting off string and progressively um, playing more and more detaché. Don't forget the vibrato, also uh, an arc to the vibrato. So, more vibrato on the top of the phrase, which is the C. Let's talk about what we all love so much to practice, all those passages, virtuosic passages that are never clean, no matter how long you practice them. Uh, let's start from this infamous triplet uh, passage. Uh, I practice them like this. Mm -hmm. By breaking down to basically uh, chords. Etc. Accent the top in the bottom of those triplets every time. So eventually you start the bow will start jumping, hopefully. But be sure you don't neglect the middle voice and so alternate by bringing the middle voice out. Etc. Fun stuff, I know. I've been asked uh, recently in a class how I work on the octave passages. So um, there's really no shortcut here, no shortcuts. Um, I I try to separate sometimes, just play the thumb position while keeping my hand as if I'm playing octaves. <laughs> Most important is to nail that last B, uh, the high B octave, which is the hardest thing, of course, because practically when you, when you play with an orchestra, those octaves are barely heard, but the, the top will be heard. Um, let's see here. Be sure you keep your hand parallel when you practice. I think that helps a lot. Again, I do, I, I separate the voices. And then. And then. Etc. Um, 
that's where my metronome really helps uh, with cleaning, with tuning the, the doctor beat that I've talked about in this other episode that you should totally check out. This is it for now. I hope you got some new ideas on how to practice this uh, great piece and uh, have fun with it. Bye. This is it for now, guys. Uh, I hope uh, you got some, why am I saying ass so much? <laughs>